coming to you from our KMD studio. It's Soya Chincha Presents Live and Raw. A show where we answer your questions. I'm Zamira with Rory, Zag, and Insan, and tonight, smartphone repairs. With your host, Amin Ashari and Alexander Wong. Yay! Hello! It's, a, it's, it's another, a another, another awesome Friday. Hello, everybody. Thanks for watching. Um, we have a very special show for you today uh, because we're going to talk about um, smartphone repairs. Um, but before we go into the show, uh, our... You know, um, the thing that we must do first is, of course, say hello to everybody that's watching the show. So I just want to give a big shout out to all our friends on Clubhouse, to the team, Zachary, Intan and Marcus. Thank you for joining us. I see on Clubhouse, uh, Pravin and Nazrin. I see, so- uh, I see Sophie, I see Chris and of course, I see the young YouTuber, Blo- Bo- Box of Tech. Uh, joining us today on uh, this show. Okay, for, for, for your information, for those of you who just joined us, uh, l- what's the show called again? Life and, and Raw. Raw. <laughs> <laughs> Life and Raw is a show where we, Alex and I, answer all the questions that you have about technology, gadgets, and everything else that you want to know. So we'll try to answer them as best as we can. Uh, and on today's episode, uh, on today's show, we're talking about smartphone repairs. So if you have any questions about smartphone repairs, um, how much should you? Pay for a screen. Uh, can what can you repair? What can't you repair? Uh, have you been? Have you had like a bad experience when it comes to repairing smartphones? Um, I don't know. Have you had like a bad experience repairing smartphones? I know so I've been not. like quoted like super expensive like, about smart uh, when I'm trying to repair phones. How about you? Yeah, I think I got some couple of those. I can't remember which phones exactly. It's one of those days when we have feature phones and it's so expensive. You might just buy a new phone. But the thing is, does it have to be really expensive? Yep. Are smartphone repairs difficult? Can you do it yourself? What tools do you need? I know like it, it, it gets a bit like uh, scary because some uh, most people only have like one phone and they try to repair it and they make it worse. Like Zamira's case earlier, she tried to repair a phone and she made it worse. The only way to get better at it is to practice and try and try and try. But you don't have a lot of opportunities to do that. And then you talk about like learning on YouTube. Okay, the thing is, yeah, it's YouTube is a good place to learn new skills. But when you go deeper and when you try doing things and when you try uh, learning it yourself, when you talk to people who really know how to do it and when you learn from people who really know how to do it, you realize that actually, hey, you know what? The things that they show you on YouTube is actually not the whole thing. So sometimes they miss a step or sometimes they complicate a step and it might not be what you should do. So... I hope the introduction is enough and I hope everybody is clear on what we're doing. Uh, I think we're going to go into questions soon. But before we do that, I just want to remind everybody, if you're on uh, Facebook, come. Get all your friends to come and join us. Uh, have, uh, you know, if, if, if you think that this is useful for them or if they're going to try and learn how to repair a phone, come and join the show. Ask a question. Uh, if you're on Clubhouse uh, and you have friends who think that this is going to be awesome and going to be useful for them, get them to come and join the show as well. Uh, we want to hear. Uh, we want. We want to hear your questions and we want to answer them for, as best as we can. All right. I want to give a big shout out to the guys uh, on Facebook. I see. Oh, so many people. Okay, Syed is on Facebook as well. I so I also want to give a special shout out to a new friend and also my teacher, uh, Afdan. He he's the guy that's teaching me all this cool stuff about smartphone repair. So he's a a real expert. If you guys want to know more about smartphone repairs, you should be friends with him. Uh, a big shout out to also uh, I see that Kuma, a new friend as well. Thank you very much for joining the show. I hope you find it informative. Um, and we we have questions, Rory. Yes, we do. We have one question on Clubhouse and a couple of questions on Facebook. Okay. Where would you like to begin? Where, who, who, where, which one, Alex? Let's start with Clubhouse. Sorry, Clubhouse? Yeah. Okay. First up, let me invite first. We have uh, Mr. Marcus Chu. Marcus? Oh, regular. <laughs> hello, Marcus. Can hello. you hear us? Hello, hello. Hello, can you hear hello, us? Marcus, Marcus? Yeah, yeah, I can. Mm. Okay, so my question is, you know, like, 
most of us on Clubhouse are using iPhone. Pretty expensive. Most, uh, not all. Uh. Oh, see. So what do you think of like? I think everyone lah, uh, but you know, like we are using very expensive phones. But Apple does not let you know like third party repairs. And even if you you know fix a third party and you bring it back at their store, they oh, refuse to repair for you. Like, what 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 do you think? You know, as Marcus must be <laughs> on uh, you mobile. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, I don't know, Rory. Can you just tell Marcus to? I think I understand the gist of the question, Marcus. Uh, we'll 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 bring him down. Yep. Um, if we if we don't answer your question, maybe you can raise your hand again and come back up. Okay. So I just want to repeat. Okay, Marcus' question is: uh, People who are using iPhones uh, and Apple uh, have like uh, probably they what he says that like they are limiting or they don't allow people to repair they don't encourage you to repair okay yeah, so for, okay then he's asking like what what are our thoughts on that um okay alex can you just give a background story of whether this apple is not allowing you to repair is right or wrong well um they i don't have an official answer to that but we have seen reports of people saying that especially the latest iphone 12 mm-hmm. um they do not let you just simply swap parts that easily like mm-hmm. for example there's this uh, report no mistaken by 9 to 5 mac they mm-hmm. reported once that they get two identical uh, identical iphone 12s and then they just swap the camera same parts but it just couldn't work so it, it seems that uh, apple has has added like some restrictions in the os to limit the the repairability of your device that's what it seems lah so for example so in a way they want you to go back to the original Apple authorized service center to replace your components okay uh that's one and then also when people say that oh Apple is not allowing you to repair their devices uh I think it's fifty fifty on that I don't think it's entirely true because there are a number of countries uh, I think it's some countries in Europe uh, in Europe and and Brazil uh, if I'm not mistaken Um, they have a movement. It's called right to repair. I means hak untuk mem- membaiki, uh, and that that right to repair means manufacturers and device manufacturers. They are by law obligated to make sure that their devices are at least repairable, at best easily repairable, and parts are easily and readily available for you to purchase and repair yourselves. Uh, and Apple is highly affected by this. Um, And contrary to popular belief, uh, actually Apple phones are the easiest to repair. They are the easiest to open up, and their parts are the easiest to replace. Uh, regards to getting the parts themselves, that is another question by itself. Um, will will it is it possible for you to get original Apple parts? Certain parts you can. You can get the original Apple parts. Certain parts, especially for devices that are already five, six, seven years old. Like maybe the iPhone 8 or the iPhone 5, uh, you might not be able to get the original parts. But there is a booming industry and there is a booming market for refurbished parts or OEM parts, and it's quite easy to get. So is Apple making it difficult for you to repair your devices? Actually, not not really. Uh, like I said, uh, it's the easiest parts to replace, uh, repair, replace. Um, and then there are countries and there are laws that that will be in place that will make it compulsory for device makers to make parts repairable and serviceable. So I don't think so. Okay, Marcus, I hope I've answered your question. Um, let's go on to the next one. All right, shall we go to a Facebook question? Yeah, let's do that. All right. Uh, so, well, I forgot about the sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Shaginderan Rajanderan, hopefully I didn't butcher it too badly. Uh, he asks, is it possible to only fix my Gorilla Glass screen rather than the entire LCD set? Hmm. Interesting question. I always have that question as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um... This is a really great question, and uh, the answer to this, yes, it is possible, but there is a caveat here. Number one, uh, the display must be an LCD set. It can't be an AMOLED display. So if your if your phone is an AMOLED, if your if your phone uses AMOLED, out of out of luck at the moment. It's 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 really difficult to separate the glass layer from the display ooh, 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 that, <laughs> from the display layer <laughs> from the display layer for lcd there is actually a display panel 
and on top of the display panel is the glass. So is it possible to do that? Yes, uh, but it takes a lot of effort. Um, and and I don't, I'm not sure whether it's possible to do it at home, um, because uh, you need to heat up the the glass panel, um, and you need to, you know, um carefully separate the glass panel from the display panel because you risk you run the risk of damaging uh the display panel itself uh and then the next thing is uh the display panel that your the glass panel that you're replacing will you be able to get the will you be able to get a gorilla glass uh panel um because of the way that the market is selling all this stuff and the way that it's labeled, it's actually quite difficult to know whether the glass will be Gorilla Glass. If it is, it might be quite expensive. So to answer your question, yes, for LCD, yes, it is uh, possible for you to separate the glass panel from the display, display panel and replace it. Um, but because LCD panels are so cheap now, where I'm not sure whether you want to go into the investment to get the special tools and stuff like that, or just replace the part itself. Means replace the whole set, the glass and the LCD. Yeah, that's right. right. Just replace the whole panel itself. Yep. Okay. So I hope I've answered your question. Let's go to the next one. Awesome. Uh, we have a question from Clubhouse. Nice. Gonna invite. Hello, Pravid. Can you please accept the invitation? Hello. Oh. Hello. Hi, Pravin. Please Can ask you your question. Me? Yes. Yes. Hi, Pravin. Oh, uh, hello there. It's uh, it's really nice to meet you. I I always wanted to meet a YouTuber. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So my I'm well, actually going to ask the opposite of what Box of Tech asked. Oh, okay. Is, uh, what is the most expensive part to repair on a smartphone? Hmm. Okay. Um, I don't know whether. Thank you, thank you, Pravin. Uh, is that is that your only question? Uh, so far, that is my only question. Am I am I allowed to ask more questions in the future? In uh, in the future? In the future, yes. yes later, you mean later, right? Yeah, yes, definitely. The more the more questions we have, the better. Uh, that means we learn. Uh, that means. Uh, this is the first time I am on the Clubhouse app, and I just want to say live thank you to Box of Tech to give me the invitation to Clubhouse. Oh, thanks. All right. Cool. Thank you, Box of Tech, for uh, giving Pravin the invitation to join Clubhouse. And thank you to the both of you for joining the show. I hope you find this very useful. Okay, so for those who didn't, uh, weren't in or came in later and didn't listen to the pre-show, uh, Rory, you can remind me. Uh, if if I'm not mistaken, uh, Box of Tech, Syed, he asked, uh, what is the cheapest part to repair? Easiest. Easiest. Easiest part to repair on the smartphone. And then Pravin is going to ask uh, the question that is, he says, opposite. Uh, here's the funny thing, guys. Uh, those two, the answer for those two questions is the display. It depends, lah, of course. It depends on the, on the phone that you're working on. Uh, again, so if it's an iPhone, the display, especially iPhone 6 and above, the display is the easiest thing to replace. Uh, it's just a matter of a few screws and a couple of connectors and you're done. Uh, with regards to a Samsung phone, uh, the difference, uh, it might not be as easy, but it's still okay, lah, I guess. Because, okay, with a Samsung phone, the problem is on an, on an iPhone, the uh, componentry, meaning the motherboard and everything, sits inside the case. It's not, con- it's not stuck onto the display itself. On a Samsung phone, it's the other way around. So you see this very similar on, on most Samsung phones. The componentry, the motherboard, the battery, uh, not the battery, the motherboard, the, um, the camera module, the sorry. camera and everything is stuck to the display. So if you need to replace the display, you have to take out all of the componentries and then replace the display. So for, for iPhone, all you have to do is just open up the, the phone and for the newer ones, it, it just uh, opens up like a book. Uh, just be careful with the ribbons inside because there's a lot of very fragile connectors. And and uh, unscrew everything. Uh, just make sure that you know which screw goes where because some screws are different than others. And then just replace the connector and you're done. So, uh, okay, just another caveat here. Some iPhones, so iPhone 8 and above, you need like a, there's like a special step. Uh, 
uh, where you have to reprogram the display, but you need a tool for that, and the tool is not really that expensive, but it's super easy to do. So to answer your question, the most expensive thing to re- uh, dis- uh, re- replace on a phone and the easiest thing to replace on a phone is the display. Especially, okay, the expensive part is the AMOLED display. That is expensive. I just recently replaced uh, AMOLED display on a Samsung Note 5. So Note 5 was like, what, five years ago? Around here. And even uh, the display was five years ago, uh, it cost me it cost me a lot. Uh, it cost me over uh, 500 ringgit. I remember back then, like the S7 Edge, right? That's yeah. like one of the popular phones with a like dual curve AMOLED mm-hmm. display. Mm-hmm. To replace that, it's going to cost you like 1,000, 2,000, Yeah, Am- AMOLED is expensive. Uh, on, the, on the flip side, an iPhone 6, uh, iPhone 8 display, LCD panel, Uh, cost only about 150 ringgit to replace. Oh, that's a huge difference. Yeah. How about the iPhone 10 or the new OLEDs? How much is that? Do they do they cost? Uh, I gotta check. So that's a good question. So let me let me check. So I'm not sure whether those replacement parts are available. Um. Okay. So, uh, the new ones, iPhone 11 Pro, the part, the or the the OLED part. It's going to set you back like a thousand bucks to replace. Uh, uh, Nine hundred, eight hundred bucks to replace. Yeah. I mean, if you go to a shop lah. But if you know where to go, yeah, if you go to a shop lah. <laughs> what, what about, what about uh, screens with uh, in-display fingerprint scanners, like the ultrasonic kind? Yes. You can replace them. Are you asking about like the easy? price? Uh, as in like, is it more difficult or is it like easy? Uh, it is, uh, it is, okay. So for, for Xiaomi, for example, the construction is completely different from like a uh, Samsung. So the difficult ones are Samsung. Xiaomi's again is the s- similar. You you open it up and, and, and you just replace it. Oh, because oh, I think Samsung is the only one that's doing ultrasonic for their fingerprint scanners. Yeah. So that one is the difficult one. Yeah, so you have, because the thing is, Uh, on Samsung, right? Everything is connected to the display. Everything is on the display itself. So you have to remove unnecessary parts that you don't have to necessarily remove when you need to replace the display. You, so basically, you have to remove everything oh. and then replace the display because the display is the last part that you get to because you have to remove everything else. Okay. So with the iPhone, yeah. the display is the first part. Mm. So it's not like for Samsung, right? Even to replace display, you need to open from the back. Like you need to dig from the back, go down to the display. Is that how? It yeah, works? yeah, yeah. Because uh, you have to open the back panel. Uh, and for Samsung, it's difficult because it's all glass, uh, and it's all glued together. So if you're not careful, even pros, uh, even uh, this this happens to pros as well. So even if if you're not careful, and you try to pry the glass open on a Samsung de- device, it will or the chances of it breaking is very high. So I guess that's the reason why Samsung is moving to plastic, because plastic doesn't break. Mm. Maybe, maybe. But the construction itself is quite difficult. For for Apple, you don't have to glue anything back if you replace the display. For Samsung, there's a lot of gluing involved. So you have to glue the display. You have to glue the back uh, back glass. Uh, if you break the back glass, you have to replace. Uh, you have to find a replacement for the back glass. But fortunately, the back glass is quite cheap, lah. Mm. Okay, let's go to the to the next question. All right, let's take a question from Facebook now. Just now we did. Just now we yeah, did Clubhouse. Yeah, right? no, just now was Facebook. Oh, just now was Facebook. Uh, the answer that we just re- uh, the no, it was Clubhouse. Clubhouse, Clubhouse. Oh, is it? it? Was, uh, oh, okay, shit's okay. friend. Okay, okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for, so Nena, Nena Majid. Yo, hi. Yo, hi. How do I know if the repair shop fixed my LCD using legit LCD set? Hmm. Good question. Hmm. Okay. Um. Okay. Before I go into that, I see a lot of people on uh, Clubhouse. I just want to give a shout out to all the newcomers. I see Xavier. I see Aminuddin. I see Jadid, Firdaus, Faris, Anis, Nase, Zafrol, Adli, uh, Muhammad, Azhari, and Hazik. Thank you for joining the Clubhouse, guys. I hope you find this show useful. We're talking about smartphone repairs, and also we're going to answer any questions that you might have about smartphone repairs and everything else about technology and gadgets. Okay, so the question just now is, how do we know whether... Uh, um, the LCD display is legit. LCD display is legit or not. Um... The only way for you to know is for uh, okay, it's, uh, it's difficult, difficult. It's difficult to say. Okay, if you're talking about um, Apple, uh, oh, even Apple, huh? Okay, it's difficult, um, difficult to say. The only way to know if you're if you're using Apple, there's there's a tool 
that you can purchase that can verify whether this LCD is original or not. Um, so all you do is you connect that uh, the, L- the replacement LCD panel to the tool and then the tool will show you that whether this is original or not. So you can tell the shop to, to show you that this is original. So if you're replacing iPhone uh, parts, you can do that to say that whether it's legit or not. For every other phone, um, it's very difficult, very difficult because they can show you a part that can look exactly like the original part, but it's, uh, it's almost impossible to tell. Uh, even if they show you the part, if you don't have the eyes, or I mean, not eyes, I mean, if you don't have the experience to know what is the difference between original and not, it's very difficult to tell. Um, but the thing is, I just want to say, uh, uh, especially for older phones, parts are get the OEM parts are getting so good that it's almost almost un, uh, un- unnoticeable, almost the same thing, and it's not actually worth the money paying for the original part itself. It's only a concern if the repair shop is telling you that, hey, this part is already, but it's not. One way can tell perhaps is to check whether, like for example, if your phone is full HD, try to see whether it's full HD. Like try to play YouTube and see whether it can run as a full HD or not. That's maybe one option. Or do a screenshot and see the size of the picture. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a good tip. So, um, yeah, sometimes you do get a replacement part that is not up to spec. Um, my my advice is if you go to that shop uh, and you got, you got that... Um, Either don't go to that shop again or, you know, try and get a replacement. Uh, also, I just want to add that some AMOLED displays, um, if you are out of budget, so let's say you want to replace a, a AMOLED display and it's, it's going to cost you like 800 or 1000 bucks, uh, you can opt for an LCD OEM. So you can opt for like a cheaper version. It's not original, of course, it's OEM, but it fits your phone almost perfectly. So there is a choice for that if you're interested into that kind of thing. I hope I answered your question. Cool. Okay. okay. Yeah, all right. Let's uh, move on to Clubhouse then. All right. Hello. Hi, Siok. Hi. Hi. Um, Hello. Yes. So, I have a question about um, what's your take on Apple Care? Okay. Is that is that your only question? Yeah, that's my question. All right, thank you very much. Sure. Uh, that is a really good question. Um, I like that. Okay, uh, I'm just going to answer that first. What is my take? Apple Care is so, 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 and I cannot underline this further. It's so worth it. Yeah, especially <laughs> apart from iPhones. Did not so expect that. that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> apart from iPhones, I think if you own a Mac, especially a MacBook Pro, I think that's something that's worth investing in because if let's say anything goes wrong like the screen or the motherboard, that's going to be a very expensive affair. So that Apple Care gives you a greater peace of mind. Yeah, because if you're uh, if you're under warranty, um, with Apple the replacement is easy actually. They will replace your unit one to one. Uh, in 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 other countries, especially in the US and all that, the replacement is really quick. But in Malaysia, it's quite. Leceh lah, you know, uh, you have to send it to a Apple Center. The Apple Center will say, okay, we're going to, you know, take it to the back and let the technician take a look at it. And it's going to take a couple of days. Actually, it doesn't. It takes probably like five minutes to check and then five minutes to verify whether the replacement is correct or not. And then it's done. I guess, okay, I'm trying to be fair here. Some of the replacement can be super quick. Uh, in fact, Alex, you've, you've gotten a replacement on the spot. Uh, no, not on the spot, but they're fairly quick. I mean, they give the proper SLA, but I must say that Apple's customer support in terms of uh, servicing is excellent. I would say better than other brands because number one, uh, I had an Apple Watch, the first generation one. Mm. It was out of warranty after three years, but there was a service bulletin that says that, you know, there's something wrong with the battery mm. and I got it replaced for mm. free. I think I got it within seven days. Same thing with my iPhone 5. So there's a bulletin about some power button issues, mm. battery issues. I went to machines and said, oh, you know what? Your phone's part of the bulletin. Mm. Then replace the phone for free. Mm. So pretty good service. Yeah, similarly, um, my AirPods Pro, you know, AirPods had like this really, AirPods Pro had this re- really weird buzzing sound. Uh, I got that replaced, no questions asked. But the thing is, it, it took a couple of days. So where, where I want to say I want to be fair is that sometimes there are people that go to Apple Store, try to claim warranty one-to-one, but they actually have already replaced all the parts inside the phone itself with other parts or they, 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 they scavenge the part, took out the battery and everything and replace. So that's why sometimes it takes longer because the technician has to open it up and really look like, um, 
has the parts been replaced? Because it's also well known. Uh, I'm not sure whether you guys are aware of this. Apple take take back all these parts that they've replaced and refurbish them and then send it back out as as, as replacement phones. So uh, to answer your question, Sio, is it worth it? It's worth it because Apple really take care of their customers, to be honest. Uh, very easy. Bad experience I have with another brand, Samsung. I bought a Galaxy uh, Fold. Uh, it's a, I bought it in Singapore. And I had problems with it. So I tried to send it to a Samsung uh, service center in Malaysia. And the answer I got from them is, oh, this is a Singapore unit. You have to send it back to Singapore. And I didn't accept that because, you know, Samsung is an international brand. Let's say if my Z Fold, my, my Galaxy Fold broke when I was in another country. Do I have to bring it back to Malaysia? What if it's my only phone? With Apple, that doesn't happen. If you buy an iPhone in Malaysia and it's broke, uh, and you broke it in Zimbabwe, wherever Apple is uh, officially available and your unit is an official unit, they will fix it. They will replace it for you. No questions asked. It's one it, caveat. As long as that product is available in that country. Yeah, I yeah. wanted to say, like even in Malaysia, they will do that, but they will do it for, for, for things that are sold in Malaysia. So, example, um, app, what is not... Uh, HomePod. Okay, so the HomePod is not sold in Malaysia and you buy the HomePod in the US and you come to Malaysia and something happened to the HomePod, you cannot mm, get it repaired in Malaysia by an F, uh, authorized Apple repair center. But if you buy an iPhone 12 Max, 12 Pro Max in the US and it and, and it came to Malaysia and it broke, it, it, can, it can be repaired. I, I, you know, like the Samsung case, I don't like it because let's see if somebody bought a gift for somebody and that gift was bought in the US. And in Malaysia, it broke. Uh, and that person cannot cannot get it repaired. So it's a bit of a hassle. Lah. So whatever people say about Apple, their customer service is actually top-notch. Okay, I hope you answered your question. Let's go to the next one. Um, actually, before that, I just noticed a comment on, on, on Facebook yep. where Wong Andrew Ning Chin says that, nope, in China, it's a different story. Oh, is that true? Which, uh, what story is different in China? I think it's referring to if your phone breaks in China. Your iPhone. Okay, I, I I don't have any experience in uh, breaking phones in China. China. Not mm. here. So so maybe maybe uh, Andrew, you can uh, you can elaborate what what you mean by in China. It's a whole yes. different story. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So in the meantime, mm. let's move on to the next question on okay. Facebook. It's actually quite similar to one that we've already answered. Answered. <laughs> so Logan Baloo uh-huh. says, "What are your thoughts on Apple blocking third party repairs?" Um, okay, I think we've answered this already, so I'll cut it short. Uh, there are uh, countries are getting smarter. They are going to put uh, laws in place. It's called the right to repair law, where they will require um, manufacturers to make devices easily uh, uh, repairable, at least repairable, at most easily repairable. Uh, is Apple blocking, uh, making it difficult for you to repair your own parts? Actually, no. Uh, to access the, the the componentry inside the device itself is super easy. You, you need you need just one uh, screwdriver, the pentalobe screwdriver, and then you need a Phillips screwdriver just to take out all the parts. Uh, parts uh, are readily available, although they're not, they might not be original. Um, so where this comes from is uh, from iPhone 8 and above, there is one step that you need to take to make sure that the, 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 the part that you replace is usable with your device. For example, if you're replacing a display, uh, you might uh, if you don't do this step, you might lose out on true tone and you might lose out on 3D touch. Uh, so to... And, and it's not like impossible to get. To get it, all you have to do is just uh, read from the replace from the part that you're replacing. So from the part that you, that that's broken, you need a tool that can read the data, and then that tool will then write that data onto the replacement part. And then when you install it, it will work just like it's uh, original. So my thoughts are this: this this uh, this is not. I mean, it's not difficult. Lah. You can overcome it quite easily. Do you have a question from Clubhouse? Uh, we had a raised hand, but uh, the hand is no longer raised. So okay. maybe we answered the question already. Yeah. Let's move on. Okay. Next question on Facebook then. Yep. Let's go. Oh, this familiar person. <laughs> oh, Hanif Azrai. 
Oh, sounds familiar. Sounds like a famous uh, keyboard warrior. <laughs> Hanif asks, can you share with us how technician troubleshoots phone problem? Oh, okay. Oh, wow. This is a very technical question. Uh, yes, I expect no less from uh, Mr. Hanif Azrai. Um, it's very generalized. Okay, so the, the, the repairing phone is fun because it's like a treasure hunt. You go step by step to discover the problem. And it's very satisfying. So there, I, I cannot go through the whole process because it's very technical and it's very long. The first thing you need to do is you need to make sure whether the phone can receive power or not. So the first thing when you receive a phone, you you ask uh, the customer or whoever owns the the owner, uh, can you turn it on? And you try to turn it on. Uh, if it doesn't turn on, uh, you check whether it's chargeable or not because then you'll know whether uh, whether the display is a problem or whether the board itself is a problem. And then when you try to charge it, uh, you need to have a charger that can show you the um, volts and watts that goes in. Uh, you know, those dig- the ones with the digital readout. You can get that on, uh, on Shopee. So when you see the charger uh, start charging the phone, uh, you have to check the voltage, uh, whether, it's, uh, uh, whether it's up to the specification of the phone. So let's say if the phone can take 18 watts of charging, you look at the volts. Uh, the volts should be just 5, uh, five volts, 5 amps. And you look at the voltage. Uh, if it, is it up to mark? Uh, if it's up to mark, then you know probably the board and the battery is fine. Then it could be something else. It could be just the display. But if it's not up to mark, then you know you you're going into like all the technical technicalities of you know you have to open up the phone, you have to check the componentry one by one, you have to use like a power supply. So I don't think I have time to go into that. But yeah, if you're interested, if you guys are interested to know more, maybe we can do a part two, live and raw, about phone repairs. Let's chime in. Is there like a tool to like diagnose the phone? Like, you know, like how cars you just plug something in and can show the status? Like an ODB. Okay, yeah. can. There is. Okay. You know what? There is a tool like that. Uh, th- for Apple, you don't have to buy anything. You just need to use iTunes. Uh, you plug it in. Uh, you have to press some buttons. Uh, you have to get it into this mode. Uh, like a recovery mode. mode. Like a recovery mode where it's uh, where it's ready to be reflashed. You run the program and it will tell you. Uh, it will give you error codes. Oh, nice. And then you have to just Google the error codes and then, you know, figure it out. Uh, again, it's a problem solving thing. For other devices, nope, no such luck. You have to you know, go through this process, charge the phone, check the display, turn it on. Uh, and if it's not, you have to go through one by one and figure out the problem. Okay, Anip, thank you very much. Uh, I just want to shout out on Facebook, uh, Logan Baloo. He says, you can change parts, but there will be a notification. Yes, Logan, if you listen to my answer just now, uh, that will happen if you don't do that step that I mentioned to you. You need a tool to reprogram the replacement part with the data from the original part. And that's very easily done. So once you do that, the notifi- notification will not appear anymore. Yes, DFU mode. That's right. Uh, this is the mode that I was talking about okay. for the iPhone. Thanks very much, Logan, for the answer. Okay, let's go on to the next question. Actually, we're uh, almost out of time. We'll take maybe how many more questions? Wow, that 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 went like really quick. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's let's get it get it over. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next one. Since Roy says two, but since two it's questions. Friday, I will say three. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, I'm let's go. Re- I mean, so very generous. Have, yeah, we have a few more on Facebook. I think we have two more on Facebook. So, and one more raised hand on Clubhouse. Let's go, Clubhouse. Clubhouse. Yeah. Okay. He's a familiar listener. <laughs> hey guys. Again. Yes. Hello. Hello. Said, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine. All right. Let's go. What 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 question do you have first? First, uh, I'm going to share my experience. As you said just now, like if you buy a phone from another country, mm-hmm. they, if you can still repair it here mm-hmm. if you had Apple Care. So when I had Apple Care, my, my auntie, she bought an iPhone 6 Plus, 128 gigabyte at Saudi Arabia. Mm. And she repaired it here because mm-hmm. the screen is a bit glitching. Mm. So then she repaired it with Apple Care and it's free. And the one thing that they offered is, so my auntie also had an iPhone 5S, which was my old phone before that she gave me. Mm. 
and the offer was the Apple Store, uh, the the Apple Service Center guy said, you know what? You give your iPhone 6 Plus and your 5S, and then you add like 900 to 1,000 ringgit. We give you the iPhone X. Wow. Yep. That time, that was like the iPhone X is the latest lah. Mm. But then my auntie that time, she really hated iPhone <laughs> because <laughs> auntie always forgot the password. Because she always forget her password. password? That's not yeah. iPhone's problem. That's her problem. Use Touch ID. Sorry, ID. sorry to your auntie, but you know, hello auntie, can you please remember your password? <laughs> I know. And then she said, I don't want to use iPhone anymore. People give me free, I give you. Wow. wow. So you untung lah. That's why you should program uh, difficult uh, difficult passwords <laughs> for your auntie and get new phones. Um, okay, Said, we don't have much time. Uh, do you have a question? Or, but that's a really interesting experience that you share. And again, that's also one of the reasons why I advocate um, buying Apple Care. Uh, also, another tip, uh, for Apple Care, you don't have to buy it at the point of purchase. Uh, because you have a warranty of 12 months, you 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 only buy it when that warranty period is up. So that's how you can save some money. So, before it's up, yeah. yeah, before it's up, yeah, yeah. So you can wait for like 11 months, and then at the 12 months, buy Apple Care to extend your warranty. And that's and that's super good of Apple. Okay, so um, sorry if I'm wasting your time. Uh, no, 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 you're no, not. You're not. We're just we just we just uh, almost out of time. <laughs> So my question is yeah. Okay, so I have a first generation iPhone. Wow, three okay. GS or three G? The two G. What? Two G. Okay. I have the two G, three G, and three GS. All of them. <laughs> wow. wow, iPhone Fanny. Your aunties, all all those are from your aunties, is it? <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, I'm wasting your time now. All right, go, go, go with your question. Okay, so the two G, it has some dead pixels on the screen. Like it still works, but it has the Dead pixels, mm-hmm. and if I want to replace the screen, what do you think I can repair, and how much is approximately the screen for the like the OEM one? Okay, dude, I'm going through like the price. Uh, I'm going through the list of parts now. Um, wow, this is like very old. Yeah, uh, it's over 10 years old. Maybe one option is to buy a working iPhone 2G or 3G. Is it the same 2G and 3G display? Uh, yes, should be the same. Uh, I okay, you stop me on this, dude, because I'm not sure whether the 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 way to repair is the same, and I'm not sure whether the parts are even available. Uh, even if you think about like cars, right? Uh, cars that are 10, 11 years old, all, almost quite difficult to get the parts. So. I applaud your mission on trying to revive this iPhone. Uh, yes, like Alex said, the best way is probably to go to eBay and uh, try and find refurbish or salvage parts. I'm sure you can get them, but be ready to pay a pretty penny for it. Uh, and even if you do get it working, I'm not sure if it's going to work on on uh, a cellular network, uh, uh, a mobile network anymore. I think 2G is still can just to receive calls. Yeah. Especially on 3G. And uh, the other thing is, I'm not sure if you can get a uh, iOS 14 to run on it. Definitely not. So the the problem <laughs> with that is, you know, you're exposing yourself to security. So, uh, let us know, dude. If you if you get it working, let it, let us know. I'm sorry, I can't answer this question. But again, awesome question, Said. Thank you very much. Okay, second last question. Let's go. All right, from Facebook. Jeff Starbuck. Nice name. Should I buy the S21 Ultra or should I get the normal S20? Okay, Jeff Starbuck, thank you for that question and I think it's perfect for Alex to answer this. Well, I think the first question is what is your budget? Because these two are very different phones. One's the older phone, uh, the normal S20 is a smaller one and S21 Ultra is the the new, the latest flagship with the bigger screen and it costs more than 5000 bucks. So, depends what you're looking for. Also, what's your budget? Because if you have the money, of course, I would say go for the S21 Ultra. But if you want to spend a bit less, um, instead of getting an S20, I would recommend getting the S20 FE, the 5G version, because that runs on a Snapdragon processor. So it's more efficient and a lot of people say it's more powerful. And you also get a 120 hertz display, wireless charging. And I think you can get it for maybe 2002, 2003 right now, if you look at the online sales. So uh, my recommendation is the S20 FE if you're on a budget. Yeah, okay. So I'm just going to add on to that. So if you want to go uh, and understand the logic here, right? So if you need uh, to be in the Samsung ecosystem, 
not not ecosystem lah. If you need to just have like Samsung, you like the Samsung UI, uh, and you use Samsung Pay a lot like me, and uh, you're looking for a second phone or or even a first phone, and you you have that budget in mind, right? Uh, I think having a Samsung that is a year older is not a problem. Uh, you save a lot of money. Uh, instead of buying the the ultimate one, because you know all of the features you don't really need actually. You don't need the process unless you're a gamer or whatever, right? You don't need the processing power and everything. Like I said, I run, I have a Note Five, um, uh, that my my kid uses, and uh, one one of my other kid uses a, a Galaxy S Seven. How old is the S Seven? S Seven, I think probably five years. Five years as well. Yeah. Uh, I, They run just fine today. I mean, uh, my kids are playing Roblox, playing Minecraft, uh, and watching YouTube. Uh, no problems with the battery. Uh, no problems with the display. I guess my my point here is that um, you don't need the latest and greatest uh, from Samsung. Um, yeah, the Galaxy S20 FE is a better option because of the Snapdragon processor. You get better performance and you get better battery life, much better battery life actually. So um, yeah, the recommendation would be go for the cheaper option if you don't need to get the best uh, and the latest and greatest because it's gonna last you quite some time. Uh, even for Samsung, they now are committing to generations of upgrade. So where normal phones like Xiaomi and Huawei and Oppo and all that only probably give you up to three years of software support, Samsung now promises five five generations, right? Uh, no, it's in four years of updates. Samsung, uh, okay, I think four, it's three, 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 two, three or four, three to four, four generation years. of upgrade. So it's it's gonna last you three to four years. Even when the Note Five was available, where Samsung is not promising you or committing to any uh, upgrades or how many years you're gonna upgrade the software, it still runs fine today. So um, go for the cheaper option if you can, or if you want to. Uh, want to take one more question from Facebook? Yeah. Okay. So Alrighty. we have the last question. Is there anybody? Is there a question from Clubhouse? There is. Uh, do you want to take that? Okay. Final two. We'll take one question from uh, Facebook and one question from Clubhouse. All right. Let's do the Clubhouse one first. Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi, Pravin. That's Pravin again. <laughs> Hi. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Loud and clear. Okay, I do not want to waste your time because I also need to. Go, I, I also need to go right now, <laughs> so I'm going to make it quick. Okay. All right. Uh, also, so I'm. I want to ask your opinion. Yeah. That um, in the month of February, mm. I bought an iPad Air 4. Before I bought that iPad, I was thinking of buying a MacBook Air, the M, the M1, or is it a MacBook? Yeah, MacBook Air. Mm. Yep. But because it was a bit uh, uh, too expensive, and I was thinking that I was still in uh, in secondary school, so I don't really need all of those, like, uh, processors, the really powerful processors, and uh, all the um, soft, software, like Adobe, everything, so mm. I just took the I, iPad Air 4. Mm-hmm. I'm currently uh, using it for the Clubhouse team, so <laughs> I'm asking your opinion, is, did I make a good decision? Okay, Farvin. Before you go, what are you using the iPad for? What are you using it for? Are you using it for schoolwork? Uh, for school. So for schoolwork mostly. Are you using it for gaming and stuff like that? Uh, I don't play any games. All right. <laughs> okay. I want the iPad just for for originally for the online classes. So you you're using uh, Microsoft uh, stuff to do work on or just Google, Google Docs? Google Google uh, Google Meet for the uh, video call. Okay. So you your have, question. I'm oh, sorry. And you have a keyboard as well for, with your iPad Air. Uh, I use an external keyboard from Logitech. Okay. All right. I think. Uh, I really badly. I really, I really hate that keyboard with an iPad. The the magic magic keyboard magic case is quite nice. Okay. Um. Thank. Expensive. Thank you, Pravin. I am broke. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, thank you, Pravin. Um, my uh, my answer to you again, and then after this, I'll let Alex answer. My answer to you is, I think that's the perfect choice. I think same here as well because one thing is that the iPad Air is a portable, and then you can it's multi-purpose. You can use it like a like a normal tablet, and and also based on your usage, you say you say that you use for online learning, uh, probably use uh, Google Docs. Uh, I think the iPad Air just fine. It serves the purpose pretty well, and I think one benefit is that it's portable. 
Yeah, uh, actually, I like the iPad Air because of the processor, right? It uses uh, the A14. A14 yeah. yeah, and that's a very powerful processor. As in fact, that's the processor that the iPhone 12 yeah. is using. So you're covered for the next five years, dude. Um, so you're covered for school. I, I like the iPad Air because uh, it's an awesome media machine. So if you watch a lot of Netflix or a lot of YouTube, I like it. I I love I love iPad as as a tablet. I'm not an Apple fanboy, but nothing beats it. To be honest, nothing nothing beats it. Okay, we are like superbly overrun now. Last question from Facebook, and we are go. All right, a Hafiz, a Hanan asks, what is the best way to completely wipe the data before selling an Android slash iOS phone? Okay. Wow. Um, we did a show on this. Uh, Nick and Ray did a show on this on uh, on our YouTube channel, so you can go and check it out. It's uh, what's what's the what's the title of the show again? How to what is how to what is how to factory reset your smartphone. Yes, how to factory reset your smartphone. So you can watch that. Uh, but obviously, the reason why you're here is if you want to hear what we uh what we have to say, right? Okay, Alex, you want to say anything? Um, basically, for me, is I'll use the the standard factory reset function. Yep. Every phone has one. Uh, mm-hmm. Of course, the way of doing it could be different based on manufacturers. So mm-hmm. Android, as you know, there's different skins. There's like One UI. There's also like uh, Mi UI, EM, EM UI, and all that. So we have the the steps for each of these manufacturers in the how to what is show. So you can check out on our YouTube channel. Yeah. So the easiest way is to follow the manufacturer's step. Um, but okay, here's the thing. Sometimes I'm not. I'm not trusting of uh, the Chinese um, OEMs, uh, not OEMs, the Chinese manufacturers, because they don't promote security and privacy as much as Samsung and Apple does. So, where Samsung and Apple, yes, you can just uh, use and follow the 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 methods that they mention in the in the um, manual. So you just go to settings, you go to reset phone, and you're done. For iPhone, uh. Another advanced step would f- would be for you to go into uh, connect it to a computer, set up iTunes, and reflash it. Just uh, make the phone go into DFU mode. Uh, it depends on what uh, iPhone you have. Uh, just Google it and just reflash it, and you're done. So it will wipe the phone clean completely. Uh, you're done. For 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 Android phones, it's a bit more complicated because for you to f- reflash. Um, the operating system that means right you wipe it clean remove the operating system and install back the operating system that is the way to make sure that it's absolutely clean um there are a number of steps that you have to take you have to number one uh, find uh, the flash tool for your phone so if it's samsung you have to go look for this tool called odin it's available for free online uh, download that And then you have to look for the firmware for your f- Samsung phone. Uh, it's a tedious process. Uh, it's more for advanced. I don't have the time to explain that. But uh, I guess the short answer is you can just use the uh, reset function on your phone uh, and you should be okay. And also, if you use a micro SD card, don't forget to take that out. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, guys, awesome! Thank you very much for all these amazing questions about smartphone repairs. I hope we've answered, we've been able to answer all of them, and I hope that you are now better informed about smartphone repairs. Of course, uh, live and raw happens every Friday 6 p.m., and we would love to hear your suggestions of topics that you want us to cover for the next show. So let us know in the comment section, or let us know in our social media where. We uh, we thrive on your comments, and you know your comments make our show better. And by making our show better, everybody else will benefit. So in fact, you're helping us, helping everybody. So you're helping everybody else. So do that. Okay. So we're at the end of the show. How do I end the show? I forgot. Huh? Uh, 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 <laughs> since there's like yeah. one last question left on Facebook from Elvin, uh, let me just quick fire this. Elvin asks, "What do you think the approximate price of the One Plus Nine lineup in Malaysia is?" <laughs> My answer mm. is probably too much. <laughs> It has a blood now. Yeah, and that's about it. Thank you, everybody. I hope you find the show enjoying. Uh, enjoy your Friday. Enjoy the weekend. 
Big shout out to everybody on Clubhouse. Big shout out to everybody on uh, Facebook. Uh, thank you, Rory, Zachary. We had Intan in the room just now. We had Zamira, the voice. And thank you very much, Alex. Have a happy weekend. Uh, we will see you again next, next Friday, Friday, 6 p.m. Stay safe and enjoy, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.